guys, it's your girl Jacqueline, the founder of The Girls Room, and you are now tuning into an exclusive interview with signed artist Ivy J. We'll be talking about her latest EP, Fifth Element. Hi, Let's start from the beginning. So, walk me through like where you're from <laughs> and how you got into singing and all of that jazz. Okay, so I'm from Patterson, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I'm currently 18 years old. You know, I'm a little baby. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I had no idea I could sing. Like, I literally grew up around my aunts and my mom. They would always blast Lauren Hill, Mary, all in the house and stuff. And I was like, damn, like this is a vibe. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So I grew up my whole life, like, obsessed with music and, like, everything, music, dancing, like, all of the arts. It was my 14th birthday. For some random reason, I just told my mom, hey, like, I don't know what it is, but I want a keyboard for my birthday. They ended up getting me it, and I self-taught myself how to play. And then, yeah, it just took off from there. I, I basically found out I could sing in the shower one day, and I was like, okay, so let me get a keyboard. <laughs> Wow. I just this ball rolling real quick. And yeah, self taught myself. Then I started posting videos on Instagram. And yeah, it's kind of where it all just started to grow. Wow, that's amazing. That's such a rare uh, talent to just discover in the shower. I sing in the shower. I know. And I, know I can't sing. So, what song were you singing that you were like, wow, I can really do this? Girl, I swear it was a Beyonce song. I don't remember okay. which one. I feel like. <laughs> It was definitely Beyonce, and I was in there like, mm, I kind of sound like Beyonce. I'm just kidding. Like, nah. <laughs> nah, but I was like, wow, like, you know, this ain't too bad. You know, I've definitely grown from where I was. Like, sometimes I hear videos of me when I was younger, and I'm like, er, you sound mm. kind of crazy. But, like, I appreciate the growth so much, so it's like, it means a lot. To Absolutely. To and to even acknowledge it, too, is really important. Because we're so into yeah. like, where we're at and where we want to go that we kind of forget about like where we came from. Um, so I was yeah, no, because you know when I first started singing, I was when I first started posting videos, I was 15, 16. Wow. So I was a yeah. baby. Yeah. Are you taking singing lessons now? Because we talked about growth. Is that something that you're taking, mm -hmm. or is that something that you're just doing on your own? I do take singing lessons now. It's very, very important. It's not just like about like just your voice in general it's kind of about being in shape all together because mm -hmm. I also like perform and dance yeah so it's kind of like you got to get your breathing right like you have to know how to handle all that so I think it's definitely something every artist no matter what even some rappers do it like it's just so important like if you want to be the best of the best mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't be too like you gotta humble yourself <laughs> everyone needs it everyone there's always space for growth yes always uh, so now that you've discovered that you can sing, right, what has been your primary, like, reoccurring source of inspiration? Like, what do you always go to for inspiration? Honestly, <laughs> it's going to sound so funny, but I honestly feel myself being most inspired when I'm, like, I don't know, not just me, but me or people around me going through, like, heartbreak. It's so weird. Mm -hmm. I think I've written the most when I've been heartbroken. I don't know what it does to you, but it like it like awakens every yes. single day. When would you say was your first heartbreak? Ha, that's a good question. I would say my first heartbreak was maybe like mm, seventh, eighth grade, I would say. I had a little boyfriend. I guess he broke my heart. I don't know. I ended up breaking up with him at the end, but he broke up with me once, and I was like, I thought my world was Devastated. like over. I, was I like, know that feeling. <laughs> I was like, the world's ending right now. What inspired this project? Did you go through another heartbreak, or were you just reminiscing on things that happened in the past? So, Fifth Element was actually inspired by all emotions in general. I kind of wanted to make a project that you could listen to when you're feeling any type of way. And I also wanted to share like an important, important thing that I've been trying to get through people that, you know, crying and being sad is perfectly fine. That's like the message I'm trying to send with all my music. So I actually have a track on Fifth Element called Cry. Yes. And it's all acapella and it's just about crying, like let it out. So with Fifth Element, yeah, I just wanted to send the message like you can feel any type of way, like it's all good. I love that you mentioned that, and that's a great transition to my next question, because I was looking at your Instagram, and mm -hmm. I saw that you posted a picture crying, and you're mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't need to be checked on, like, I'm good, but I just want to say that it's okay to feel this way. Yeah. 
what made you so, I guess, emotionally aware of how you're feeling and how to digest that? Because a lot of people are told, um, you know, stop crying or why are you crying? It's not right. serious. So do you feel like your upbringing and the way that you were raised influence how you handle your emotions? Or is that something that you just kind of like learned on your own? Growing up in a Hispanic household, you know, everyone's like, girl, wipe them tears. Like, don't cry. Yeah. Don't be, you know, everyone's like, why are you crying for? Like, but it's like, it shouldn't be that way, you know, because we're, as Hispanic women, you get raised to be tough. It's like, you got to be tough because, you know, the world is going to treat you a little different than other people and that's okay. So you get raised to be a tough individual and it's like, they kind of ignore the fact that you have emotions too. Do you have any of your fans or supporters reach out to you thanking you for bringing this to light? And what is yes, that? all the time. It's my favorite, like, when people send me messages and they're like, your music has helped me go through this and that. It helped me get out of a toxic relationship. It helped me mm-hmm. find my way through depression, anxiety. I'm like, oh, that's all I want. I want people to hear my music and be able to, like, let it out, you know? Because yeah. I feel like if I can't help you find yourself, then I'm not really doing what I love because that's mm-hmm. what I want to do. I want to help people find themselves and be happy and feel okay in this world because it's getting a little rough out here. It okay. is. <laughs> How do you want people to feel when listening to your music? All in all, on the technical side, I hope they see that we're growing. You know, we're taking the next level. With my music, I'm, I'm taking a step. We're going to come crazy this year. But also, on an emotional, spiritual level, I want them to feel okay like safe you know i kind of want my my ep to feel like a hug like like i like that like we're venting to each other you know like you feel away you listen to a song it's like this is your answer you know i kind of hope people can grasp on that because i I definitely touched on a lot of topics now that your ep is out are you just soaking in the moment or are you like still working towards like what's next for you no, we're working. We're getting ready for album mode, hopefully. You know, the album is going to be crazy. So I'm actually leaving to L.A., I think, next week. Mm-hmm. I'll be up there for almost a month. Wow. Okay. And, yeah, doing shooting more videos for Fifth Element EP. And, yeah, never stop working. Just keep what going. What made you put a uh, love song as the intro? So love song was actually the first song I made for Fifth Element like a while back so that song is pretty old mm-hmm. and um yeah like no matter how long ago we cut it we always knew that the song was special my favorite song is insecure and yes. i resonated with the lyrics a lot um and the lyric was i'm wondering what people think about me do they think i'm smart enough or pretty there's so mm-hmm. much more that they want that you want them to see so what are parts yeah. of you that you feel people haven't seen yet or that you want people to know about you that's such a good question. You know, I think when a lot of people see me, they see the hair. <laughs> They're like, oh, she's so cool. They see the the music, but they don't really see the struggle, you know, like to get where I am, all the hard work I put in, all the stuff I've been through growing up, period. And it's like, you know, it's that's why part of songs like I want to love all the parts of me because I feel like a lot of stuff I've been through, I kind of just like regret and I like you know, hold it against myself, like, uh, but I just feel like, you know, you have to learn to love the good and the bad, mm-hmm. so I'm like, I wish people could see, like, the real story and stuff, but, you know, we'll get there someday, yeah, of course. you'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> but, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot, I've been through a lot, I'm only 18, but life mm-hmm. is hard. How do you overcome those low moments? How do you get back up and say, okay, I can shake this off now? Mm-hmm, um, I actually have a mantra, that I tell myself every morning, you know, it's, it's really simple, but it's more on some like, you know, what's meant for me will be for me. Cause I have a lot of anxiety and I overthink, right? The future. And I'm like, what's going to happen? Is this? And I'm like, you know what? At the end of the day, what's meant for me will be for me. Don't stress. And yeah. so I tell myself and I get up. I also been high into anime. You can see my little boo back Yes, there. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, my boo. Uh, but yeah, so it's kind of like a mixture. It's like, you know, I've been spiritually woke. I got some some of my crystals here. They're like charging it a lot. <laughs> yes. And I have my my other one. This is a moonstone. So yeah, I've been a lot spirituality, getting myself woke, but it's been working. It's been a journey. How has it been since you launched your latest creation? 
It's been really exciting. Like, yeah, because it's been a journey because we've been holding on to that project for a minute and it was actually supposed to drop, but then, you know, the pandemic hit and it was like, oh, we gotta, we gotta fall back a little bit because everything went crazy. But now that it's finally out, it's like breath of fresh air. I, I truly believe this, right? I know times, times are weird right now, definitely, but it's so easy to give up right now, which sucks. And I just think this is the moment to push. We have a lot more time now. So this is a moment for you to get your thoughts together, get everything put and strive. Because I feel like people often give up when they feel like no one's paying attention to them, which sucks. Mm -hmm. So I would say it doesn't matter how many likes you get, how many views you get, because those people could send it to other people. Like, I just think people are always watching and you shouldn't rely on followers, anything like that. And it's really important to keep going. Like, don't, like, if this is something you love, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Use all your platforms, TikTok, Triller, YouTube, Instagram, everything, and just strive. Thank you so much for tuning into our latest interview with IVJ. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment.